Welcome back. As you may have noticed, the passage in John chapter 15 verses 1 to 17 speaks about grape farming. There are some aspects of grape farming I'd like to share with you before we look at the scripture together. On this photo, you'll see that the plants are kept upright using poles and wires. This is called a trellis. There are many different types of trellis, but I'm just going to use a really simple illustration for this explanation. Here you can see that two poles have been driven into the ground. Wires have been attached between the poles and, the, and to the other poles that are out of the picture. The wires have been pulled taut. These wires are there to guide the growth of the grape plant's branches. The trunk part of the plant, circled in red here, is what Jesus called the vine. The vine feeds water into the branches so that they can flourish. The branches are the parts now circled in yellow. When tended well, these branches produce delicious fruit. I just love eating grapes, don't you? On this picture, you will notice that the branch lying on the ground did not produce any fruit. Grape farmers know this, so quite regularly they pick up the branches that have dropped down and tie them to the trellis wire like this. This lifting up is intended to help the branches concentrate on gaining life and strength from the vine so that they one day may bear fruit. If they are not bound up, they tend to grow along the ground and don't bear fruit. Tying them up is almost like training them to grow on the trellis. Remember about this training of the branches. We'll get back to that soon. Once tied up, the branches start bearing fruit. Some branches bear less fruit than others. From time to time, the farmer goes around and prunes all the branches that have not produced much fruit. As you can see, the one branch on this picture is an example. So the farmer picks the grapes and then prunes the branch. Sometimes the farmer prunes the branches so severely that one would almost think he's just being mean to the plant. But it's actually for the plant's own good. Here you can see a real vineyard that's been pruned back. The branches have been so well pruned that two or three of the top wires don't even have any branches on them anymore. Okay, let's go back to the scripture you read earlier. I don't know how the translation you use translates verse 2, but in English, some translations say, He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit. This is actually not a good translation at all. Instead of cuts off, other English translations say something like, He takes away. This has always seemed to be a bit harsh to me. After all, Jesus is speaking here about branches that are in Him, which surely means Christians, don't you think? It's always bothered me that Jesus could have said that He would cut off or throw away Christians that do not bear fruit. What about grace then? Thankfully, most of these translations are not quite accurate in this respect. The word translated as takes away or cuts off is the Greek word airo. Strong's Greek dictionary says it means to lift up or by implication to take up or away. Thayer's Greek definition says something more appropriate. It says that airo means to raise up, lift up or raise from the ground. Aha! Does that not fit in better with what we've just learned about grape farming? It sure does. Do you remember how the farmer lifts up and ties the branch lying on the ground to the trellis? Many Bible scholars now understand it this way. And some of the more recent Bible translations have translated it in this way. For me, it fits with the caring Father God I know. He gently takes those followers of His that are not producing fruit and trains them to start producing fruit. He trains them 
just like the farmer trains the branch to grow better and to bear more fruit. He does it because he cares for us. He's such a good father to us. As you know, good earthly fathers sometimes discipline their children. This is not because they hate them. Actually, it's quite the opposite. Because they love their children, they correct them so that they can become better adults one day. Our Father God is the same way. The last bit of verse 2 says that He prunes branches that do not bear fruit so that they will bear even more fruit. It's interesting that the Greek word translated as prune also carries with it the meaning of cleansing. So for a plant we can translate it as pruning, but for us perhaps it would be better to translate the last bit of verse 2 like this. Every branch that does bear fruit he cleanses so that it will be even more fruitful. Okay, now I'm going to read the passage again with some of Jesus' words translated more accurately and showing the graphics you've just seen. Are you ready? Here goes. I am the true vine and my father is the farmer. He ties up every branch in me that bears no fruit while every branch that does bear fruit he prunes so that it will be even more fruitful. You are already clean because of the word I have spoken to you. Remain in me as I also remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. If you do not remain in me, you are like a branch that is thrown away and withers. Such branches are picked up, thrown into the fire and burned. If you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. This is to my Father's glory that you bear much fruit, showing yourselves to be my disciples. I hope that the meaning of God lifting up the branches has been encouraging and informative for you. And isn't it exciting to know that God wants to make us even more fruitful? Thanks for watching. Please complete the assignments after this video. I'll see you again soon.